doing the tidying up. Never looks the same when I do it. Right, I should be back well before Patricia and Thomas get back. The flights from Spain are running a little late, so uh, she wasn't too sure as to what... Oh, great! Great, I've been looking for that since... Uh... Speaking of the little fun game session you had the other week, um, I think it would be a good idea if you didn't mention anything to Patricia. Well, do you think that's a good idea? Well, it just sounds that if it was a party and it sounded like it, she'll think that you've been living it up or something while she was away in Mallorca. Old British saying, what the eye doesn't see, the wife doesn't give you grief over. Well, if you're sure. Anna, please, trust me. Patricia need never know. Mr Farnham, Detective Inspector Bridges, this is Constable Sims. I wonder if you could spare us a moment. Just getting the milk in. Did you think it was our rod? Why don't you try getting in touch with him, eh? I've got a number for him in all. It's up to him to get in touch with me. Our school's letting out earlier these days. It's break. I've come to see Jackie for a minute. She can show me where things are when I start the Sabbath. Well, it looks like she's already busy chatting up the customers. You don't think that's him? Him who? Paul, the lad you met in Edinburgh. I know you're poor, cos she showed me your photo. Um, yeah. Yeah, didn't cos you whinged to see it. Have you drove over from Manchester, then? No, Leanne, he flew. He's come for the open day at the poly, hasn't he? Helps Liverpool Uni now. Well, John Moore University, anyway. All the way from Manchester, then, eh? Yeah. I expect you'll be wanting some petrol, then. Uh, no, you're all right. I filled up on the way. A couple of pea cheaper than here, at all. How nice for you. I expect you'd like to donate what you save, then. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Well, every little helps, I suppose. Right, I'm going to see if your dad's got some more poppies I can have. Keep busy, won't you? Is he a slave driver, then? I work here now as well. Oh, he's not so bad. Um, well, I'll see you in a bit, then, all right? Yeah, sure. Oh, Leanne, I don't know what I saw on him now. I thought you were dead keen. Yeah, well, I was in Edinburgh, but he's not like I remember. He must have had his ear different or something, and he seemed at all. I think he's deaf fit. Yeah, well, you're quite welcome to. I'm gonna take you up on that. Yeah, see you, Stan. Okay. Take it easy now. All right, thanks. Ta-da. Right, Michael. There you go. Fourth page three. Cheers, mate. Mary had a little lamb and the doctor had a fit. <laughs> you all right, Ron? Yeah, I was just trying it out, you know. It was a joke. Was it? <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. It was just that uh, I had this... Hello, George. It was just that I had this idea, you know, for a routine based on nursery rhymes. All right, mate. You well? Yeah, not too bad. So, uh, what's this routine thing, then, Ron? Well, you know, uh, for the compares job down at Legion, you know, they're looking for them. Are you still on for that? I heard they were looking for new faces at the auditions, not old ones. Yes, thank you, George. Hey, mature me, aren't I? Mind you, I might as well have a go at it, mightn't I? Honey, it's going to be more like your baptism of fire than an audition. Come again. Well, the committee have decided to let all the hopefuls do a spot. See who goes down best on the night, you know. Sudden death. Yeah, well, I hope you uh, break a leg or whatever they say, but I better be getting back to pizza parlour scenes that I'm on my own again. But you still have sick, didn't you? Well, I'm beginning to wonder about sick, but it's not turning again. I'm struggling to cope as it is without being a man down half the time. Good to see you so busy. I'm glad to see it's going so well for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Fellow trader and all that, you know. Yeah, I'll see you anyway, Ronald. Good luck for, uh, when is it? This Wednesday, my Cheers, thanks a lot. Yeah. He seems to be struggling with the business and that. Who, Mick? No, no, he's a bit too busy, if anything. 
That's his problem, I think. Victim of his own success. Neighbour of yours, isn't he? Yeah. Hey, listen. Tell her what I could do for the audition. Seems how it's Guy Fawkes nights as well down the Legion. I could do something topical, couldn't I? I could do some bonfire jokes. Mm. Should go down the bomb. Yeah. That was terrible, that George. I thought it was a little cracker. Oh, give over, will ya? <laughs> Mind you, seriously. I could do it something to put a rocket up. <laughs> 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 Morning, love. Morning. I mean, is all this really necessary? I'm afraid we'll need to examine it for evidence. Well, do we get a receipt or something? Surely, Constable Sims. Um, and we'll need you both to make a formal statement down at the station. Yeah, but Anna, she didn't see anything, and I've told you what little I know. Just the same, Mr. Fonda. Yes, I know, but... Uh... Thank you. Oh, no. You're early. Hello. Max. Um, uh, this is my wife, uh, Patricia. And she's been away in Spain, haven't you, darling? So, um, she wasn't here when we, um... When what? Max, what has been going on? Please, it was my fault. What was your fault? Why are they taking our duvet away? Yeah, I'll leave you to explain, Mr Farnham. We must be getting on. Bye for now, Mrs Farnham. Come on, Thomas. Just what has been going on? If you don't mind me saying, I think a lick and a polish might do you any harm, Miguel. I must look like a mess. No, I didn't say a mess. But you might feel brighter if you did yourself up a bit. I mean, you're a lovely young girl. So don't think you have to walk around in sackcloth and ashes just because that Peter Harrison next door did. Well, you know, you've nothing to be ashamed of. And we don't want our Rod thinking we've let this place go when he comes back. If he comes back. I think he's waiting for me to move out. And why should you? Well, I suppose it might be fair if it's all over between us. It's just, I don't go back to me dad's if he knew what had happened. You're going nowhere. This house was half my daughter's once and it's now half yours. So you just sit tight and wait till our Rod stops behaving like a two-year-old. Until he comes back, I'm here. Thanks, Julia. But if he doesn't love me anymore... Oh, of course he loves you. He's just too pig-headed to know it at the moment. Oh, I know. You don't want to see anybody. Well, you just leave them to me. Oh. Hello, the name's Shackleton. The estate agent said it had been arranged with Mr Corkill for me to view the house again. Is he in? I'm afraid he isn't here. Oh, um, is Mrs. Corkle in then? No, um, well, yes, but she's not feeling It's all right, Julia. Oh, Mrs. Corkill, hello again. Hello. Come in, Mrs. Shackleton. Thank you. I hope it's not inconvenient. My visit has been arranged by your husband and the estate agents. My husband? Oh, I think there's been a mistake. Oh. I'm not altogether sure what happened myself. Like I say, I went upstairs to check where Peter and Diana had disappeared to, and all of a sudden she rushed out of the bedroom, half-dressed and screaming that she'd said no. But didn't you follow her home to find out what had happened, or ask Peter? Well, he ran off after her. <laughs> I didn't think it was any of my business. Well, as long as they weren't doing whatever they were doing in our house. And why were the police here? What did they say? Just that they were investigating an alleged incident. Well, maybe she's saying that Peter got a bit rough with her or something. You mean he tried to force her? Darling, I don't know. I didn't really see anything. And Anna and the others saw nothing at all. Look, it might just be that Diana was fooling around with Peter and then uh, panicked. She felt guilty. I sort of knew that they liked each other, but honestly, I didn't expect... And I didn't expect to come home to anything like... Whatever's been going on here. But I still don't understand what all these people were doing in my home in the first place. Of course, I did only speak to a young girl on reception when I rang the estate agent, but she definitely did say Mr Corkill said it would be all right for me to come and take another look. Did he? There must have been some mistake. Well, so it seems. But all I really wanted was one last chance to inspect the house. 
The area seems suitable, and you did say the next-door neighbours are a very quiet, respectable family. You don't have a lot to do with them, do you, love? They're very private round here. Oh, well, that's very good to know. We're wanting somewhere quiet, you see. Yes, but I don't think you quite understand. You see, Mr Corkhill is working away, and we're not sure if he still wants to sell. It's quite obvious he does, isn't it, if, if he says it's OK for Mrs Shackleton to come back? Well, I did assume from his agreement that the house was still on the market. Fine, if that's what he wants. Oh, good. Because we did like the house, and now we've been assured about the neighbourhood, we'd like to make an offer. Great. Sooner the better. But, Diana, don't you think you ought to have a word with our Rod first? What for? If Mr and Mrs Shackleton want it, as far as I'm concerned, they can have it. But hey, you're supposed to scramble them after you get home. All right, ta-da. Hello, testing, one, two, testing, testing. Hello and welcome. And are you ready for some scintillating repartee from one of Britain's leading funsters? That's all what, that? Well, I've got to practice for my audition down at British Legion, haven't I? Have you finished your shift now? Yeah, but I said I'd take a can of cocoa over for Leanne and then I'm due to start down at the leisure centre. Hang on, don't they have cans of drink over there at the petrol station? Yeah, but yours are cheaper though, aren't they? That's what I like to hear. Hiya. Um, what's your name Leanne said you were over here? It's not bad, your scout you, is it? It's me quiet, me dad's in the back. All right, son, what can I do you for? Um, do you remember Paul dad from Edinburgh? Oh, it's you, is it? Didn't recognise you without your tent. Listen, you take that across to Leanne, I'll be over in a minute. I will, you know. Not before you and I have had a little daddy and daughter chat, you won't. Goodbye. All right. Bye. That's that, then. Hope they have better luck living here than we did. But, Lovey, are you sure you should have said yes? It was a good offer, wasn't it? Yeah, but don't you think you should have had a word with our Rod first and then maybe you could have sorted things out? Speak to him. A chance would be a fine thing. You won't even talk to me about our marriage. You soon send Tommy around to do that. I'm not saying he's right. I'm just saying that, well, maybe he's just too proud to be the first one to climb down, that's all. Yeah. And too proud to tell me when someone's coming to buy our house. Well, he's too late now. It's sold. But this is your home. If this goes, where have you got left for him to come back to? Julia. <sighs> Look, I don't want to fall out with you. You've been really good to me. You're the only one that's understood. But I just want to see you and our Rod back together. But he left me. He doesn't want to come back here. I still say, if this place goes, well, you might as well say goodbye to your marriage. Yeah, well, it looks like I already have. <sighs> oh, no, don't. I want to change the sheets. Oh, I never got round to changing the bed. Probably just as well under the circumstances. Oh, I am sorry you had to come back to all this. So am I, but I'm even sorrier for Diana. I might go round and see her later when I've sorted some of this lot out. I, um, I think it might be better if we... if we didn't get too much involved. Trust you. My Max A, master of the Let's Sleeping Dogs Lie School. No, 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 no but I mean, in this case, right, and, and God knows what's been going on over there, if we just leave it alone, it might all just... Go away. Same old Max. You've been at the duty freeze heavy on the flight home because, if you don't mind me saying so, you've taken this a lot better than I might have expected. Yes, well, I still think you were a fool to let Anna invite all and sundry. And I'll be having words with her later. We did say she could invite people round. I'm sorry. I was wrong. And um, I should have put my foot down. But I'm not going to let anything, not even this cold, spoil all the good the break's done me. <laughs> well, apart from that, you're looking really well. Well, wonderful, really. And it's good to have you back. Mm. Well, despite having a husband who needs a minder, it's good to be back. <laughs> I still haven't caught up with why they dragged you back from Spain. They found out yet why anyone would want to cause an explosion in the shop. Few theories knocking around. The most worrying one is that it was some sort of racist attack. Oh, go away for a couple of weeks and the whole neighbourhood falls apart. This racist theory, it's not serious, is it? 
Well, at the moment, it's the only really valid one. There you go, love, and uh, 28p. Oops, sorry. Oops, that's OK. Thanks. Oops. Bye. ta -da. Well, go on and explain. What? What that Edda ball from Edinburgh is doing here. Dad, he's not from Edinburgh. He lives in Manchester and he's come to see the poly, that's all. Pull the other one, will you, Jacqueline? He plays what kind of fool am I? He's here to see you, isn't he? And I thought you learnt your lesson over hanging around with his sort. What sort? The sort that I catch you riding around drunk with in a tent in Edinburgh. And after all that trouble that Darren got you into over that school fire, now you're messing around with this pillock. Yeah, well, that's where you're wrong, because I'm not messing around with anyone. And if you must know, I've gone off him. Oh, are uh, yeah. Daddy fancies himself, and now I've seen him again, I don't. So I'm gonna go. As long as it's to tell him what you've just told me. <sighs> Listen, don't worry, I'll soon bin him off. No, no. Anyway, tell him you've got more important things to do, like supporting your dad down the British Legion. Hey, your mates are still coming, aren't they? Oh, I have to go and wait. Mr Dixon? Detective Inspector Bridges. Guilty, mate. Funny money, is it? Sorry. Don't you worry. If them dodgy tellers are going around, they won't get past our law guy here. Oh, I see. No, that's not it. Yeah, I'll get one then, Dad. You wouldn't be Jackie by any chance? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, hang on there a minute, Jackie, would you? It's really your daughter we wanted. Ah, uh, Jacqueline. What's wrong now? It's about a party Jacqueline went to the week before last. You don't mind if we ask your daughter a few questions? All right, Max. Hey, did the uh, business call on to yours? The police. Just as Patricia arrived home. <laughs> Not very happy, eh? Thought you'd been living it up whilst you'd been away. Uh, something like that. Police talk to you, then? Well, they said they were going to interview everybody that was there. Don't know what I can tell them. Do you know any more? Well, only that Diana seems to be making some kind of allegation about Peter Harrison. That is, whatever happened was against her will. <sighs> Doesn't seem the type, does he? So do you reckon she led him on, then, or what? Well, according to Patricia, she says no should mean no at whatever point a woman says it, if that is what happened between Peter and Diana. Uh, do you agree with that, Lee? That a man should stop no matter how much a woman gets him to, I don't know. Well, poised as I am on the threshold of the doghouse, I agree with anything and everything that Patricia says. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm just going to check on the repairs to the bomb site. Yeah, uh, they were a dull moment, eh? Yeah. Well, it looks like those racist attacks have gone away. Might even see Matty's face on here now it's all died down, eh? <laughs> See you. Yeah, see you, Max. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jackie. Well, well, if it isn't just a party animal that I want to see. So tell me, Maxie, just what kind of a deal was it that our Jackie was at the other night, eh? And more to the point, just what do you get up to while your pat's away? It was all perfectly above board. Yeah, that's what our Jacqueline said, actually. A perfectly innocent evening of pleasure, that's what she told the Bobbies. Except, uh, what was all this other business about Diana running away, upsetting Peter Harrison chasing after her? Have they been messing about, uh, is she so? I don't think we should be discussing this. Not now the police are involved. No, but I mean, I take it you aren't liberty to discuss certain business matters, are you, Maxwell? What business matters? Well, since the Dixon Empire shall shortly be expanding into these adjacent premises, I thought now might be a good time to take a tour of inspection with you. <laughs> and who says it'll be let to you? I mean, I'm the managing agent. Oh, yeah, but, uh... I'm the man who talks to the organ grinder, aren't I? Oh, didn't Barry Grant mention that him and I had a little chat then? Uh, has he actually said you can have it? Oh, it's good as Maxie's but as you know. He just said that I had to sort the nitty gritty out with you. But there again, I mean, I suppose he'll get round to telling you, won't he? Eventually. came round to see if you were all right. Well, as Max told you what happened. What he knows of it. Come in. No, no, I don't want to disturb you. I just just wanted to say if you needed someone to talk to. But you're probably expecting Rod home from work right now. But any time you need. Rod's left me. Because of what happened at the party? Oh, no. He'd left me before he even went to the party. He got into his head that I was messing around with Peter Harrison. And were you? No. Well, that's the stupid thing. Nothing was going on when he accused us of it. And at the party? Looks bad, I know. I like Peter. And I did go into the bedroom with him at yours. But I didn't want what happened. Hello again, Mrs. Farnham. I don't know 
not to get through it all again, do I? No, not this time, Mrs. Corkill. It was uh, Mr. Corkill we were hoping for a word with. Yeah, well, he's not here. Well, perhaps you could tell us where he might be. He doesn't live here anymore. Oh, I see. Well, we will need to talk to your husband. Do you have a, an address, a phone number? Oh, I think Julie has. Come in. I'll leave you to it. You know where I am. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheerio. You'll be telling them to have a nice day next. Well, you said be nice to the customers. Anyway, if it's a job worth doing, it's worth doing well, isn't it? Yeah, I shall remind you of that when you've worked here longer than two hours. I could make this look a bit better for you if you wanted. Yeah, but tidy that hose by the car wash first, will you? Oh, do I have to? We'll get all dripped on. You have a very funny way of handing in your notice, madam. Yes, hello. Hello, Immigration Department, please. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I just thought you should know, uh, well, there's some illegal immigrants living at number six, Brookside Close. That's Manor Park, Liverpool. Yeah. Number six, Brookside Close. And, of course, there's more Brookies same time tomorrow right here on Living. Still to come this afternoon, Mori Povich in just a few minutes' time encouraging teenage fathers to do the right thing. In Judge Judy at 3.30, a man is suing his ex-wife for the price of a motorbike. And then at 4 in the real holiday... We're off to Mauritius for a wedding. And, of course, this afternoon we're also talking about today's news stories. Um, particularly, I'd like to hear from you on this news that a simple operation to stop a lot of women going through the pain, the indignity, the trauma and the cost of IVF treatment. What do you think of that? Give us a ring or email us. The numbers and the address are on your screen. I've got the result of yesterday's competition as well, our date a day competition. Yesterday's was to win a romantic meal for two and transport there and back because we don't want you getting the bus home. The question was complete the title of this living program, Hollywood Nittany Yes, you've got it. Hollywood Lovers it was. Um, so thank you for all your entries. The winner is Mary Kelly from Plymouth. So well done to you, Mary. I hope you've got someone lovely you can take along on your date. Long, are you? Nah, about five foot nine. <laughs> it's funny that. I use that tonight. I wouldn't bother. And wouldn't you go if you're going? I only agreed to work in the shop so you could organise yourself for this audition of yours. Yes, I know, my darling. But just think when I'm a star, I'll be able to tell them all about your sacrifice on This Is Your Life, won't I? Bad at all. Can't you improve? Yeah. Doing me very nicely, this will, Maxie. I'll have all the magazines along there. I think I'll leave Jackie Corkill to run the food division. I'll look after this news agent side myself. Yeah. Might have been considered knocking the two together at some stage. Oh, a bit of a problem there, I'm afraid. What structure do you mean? No. no. Oh, had I not mentioned that spoken to Barry? Ah, uh, told you what I told you, didn't he, eh? Have they left this place to me? Not exactly. 
Lonnie. Oh, you were right on him having let it. Not, however, to you. What do you mean, not to me? Well, who's he let it to, then? Ah, oh, now, for that information, you'll have to speak to the organ grinder himself. I'm only the monkey, remember? Ah, oh, they come on, Maxie. This isn't fair. Granty as good as said that yes, we had... Yes, well, I should have uh, dealt with the managing agent after all. Anyway, must go. Promise I'd take Patricia shopping to the supermarket. I thought you were going to pick your suit up. Have you got your cleaner's ticket? A few choice words for Barry Graham when I see him, that's what I've got. He's only let this place to somebody else, isn't he? You're joking. Who to? Oh, I don't know. Yuppieus Maximus was too busy smirking to reveal that snippet of information. <sighs> oh, well, never mind, eh? Trouble as I do. Yeah, I know, but... Well, you don't want to let spoil your chances for your audition tonight. That's another thing, dear. I don't know whether I'm up to this compare and lark. Of course you are. I hope you're right. Couldn't stand two disappointments in one day. That no wonder they're not selling, look, they're hidden. Bring them all to the front and straighten that bottom shelf. Who set these down for you? I don't know. Oh, you're not bringing no stinking things in here, are you? Why, do you want some? Hey, they've good mixed pizzas. He's in there now, is he? Me? Yeah, why? Well, it just seems to be working very long hours, that's all. I think he's got staff problems, Mr yeah, Webb. well, haven't we all? You do know she's supposed to be working, don't you? Uh, well, Katie's just buying something. Yeah, well, yeah. make it very sharp, will you? In my day, we did our socialising out of working hours. All right, love. Hey, George, trying to tell us something, do you think? Yeah. So, we all set for this rave down at the Legion tonight, then? Well, I am. And my dad says I can go as long as your dad's going to be there. Yeah, well, seeing as he's one of the so-called star attractions. I wish we could go to a proper club, though. I bet you'd still do the twist down the Legion. Oh, yeah, but you know what happened last time when we tried to get in somewhere decent? They're coming down dead heavy on the underage drinking. Wherever you go, they want your birth certificate. Yeah, well, at least we can talk my dad into buying us a few drinks. Oh, it's better than nothing. Yeah, but remember, laugh at his jokes, cos the more we laugh at him, the more we'll get out of him. So, what type of a comedian is he, then? Erm, um, alternative. Your dad's alternative? Yeah, alternative to being fun. <laughs> Nothing of interest on the television? Can't concentrate. Be help if I could get more than three hours sleep in, right? Do you want me to do No, no, I'm just trying to put off going to the shops and facing the ravaging hordes. Yeah. Suppose everyone will know by now, wouldn't they? I don't suppose tongues have stopped wagging since they saw the police take you away. God knows what they're saying now. The police are going around collecting statements. Thanks, Dad. That's a real comfort. If anybody says anything, we put them straight. We haven't been charged with anything. Just put on police bail. Just? Dad, if I'm on police bail, it means they're taking this ridiculous rape allegation seriously. It means they have to look into it, that's all. And that's what we'll tell people. None of their business, anyway. Mm. It's never stopped them before. Besides... I'm more worried about what Max Farnham might say to the police. Why? What could he say? Oh, don't worry, Dad. I'm not guilty, remember? It's just... Max could make it sound like I am. If he misinterprets what he saw at the party. Maybe I should go around and have a word with him, make sure he hasn't got the wrong end of the stick. You can't do that. Why not? as if you need to go around swaying witnesses. It'll make matters worse. Do you want anything from the shops? <laughs> Does Ron Dixon do the large economy-sized aspirin? Have a bath. That'll make you feel better. Oh, I feel better when I know there's no charges to answer. This whole fiasco's over. Cheers, Mars. So you sure you're okay picking the kid? Yeah, cheers, Mars. I'm on my way now. It's me and Simba. I don't mind. Either, yeah, I know that, love. I'm just trying to spend a bit more time with them lately. You know what it's like. You have to take a bit of a backseat. You know me being so busy in the pizza parlor and that. Mm. Mind you, though, I bet if Matty turned in where he's supposed to, I thought he'd be back now all this uh, racist stuff's disappeared. Yeah, well, if he shows sure nothing we can do. Nah, thanks for asking anyway. So if he wants to take me to the pictures. <laughs> See you later. All right, All right Ronnie. Yeah, uh, no gold army in there, or what? Hey, class act, me, Michael, class act. Anyway, we're going to get a suit of snappy as me jokes, eh? <laughs> what? Oh, hello, Captain Webb. Are you looking for me? 
Come to where should we look for the Legion tonight? Well, I've come to find out where it is tonight. I've never been to your British Legion, have I? Of course you haven't, that's right. Well, I'm not sure I'll give you directions. And look, George, I'd just like to say, uh, well, I do appreciate you, you know, coming along to cheer me on, like. Well, what are friends for? Uh, as my Alfred always used to say, a friend in need is a bloody nuisance. <laughs> You're not be using that one for the audition tonight. Uh, not tonight at all. <laughs> And I don't mind admitting to you, Georgie, that between you, me and a board of censors, I'm starting to get a few butterflies about this tonight. Nah, you'll slay them. As long as they don't get to me first. I'm telling you, you don't know them down that region. Just take no prisoners down here on a party night. <laughs> I bet most of them can't even aim straight. George, they don't need to. Not when they can yawn you to death at 50 feet. <laughs> I hope you see the gob on the treasure, is missing. Hello, Hello, John. How you doing? Hey, listen, uh, don't suppose you fancy coming down the Legion tonight, do you? See a star getting buried? No, I don't suppose you do. Uh, not with all the trouble, like. Look, I'd best get back before another hen party breaks out. Yeah. Hey, George, uh, have you ever seen a lad hanging around our Jacqueline over there? No. Hmm? Must be telling the truth for once. Kids, eh? <laughs> see ya. Ta-da, George. I take it everybody's heard about this ridiculous accusation against our Peter. Well, I couldn't help it, could I, mate? I mean, the busies have been here asking our Jacqueline questions about what went on at the party. There's nothing to warrant him being accused of. All this nonsense that Dinah Corkill's been saying. Had they charged him, mate? Like? No, how can they? He hasn't done anything. Oh, no, no, I can't. I mean, know your own best, don't you? As long as you believe him, like. Of course I believe him. Why shouldn't I believe him? Did you gather any more about what happened? No. You know what, dear? I'm beginning to wish that our Jacqueline had never gone near that party. I mean, I don't know what's gone on between their Peter and Diana Corkill. But I don't want our Jackie mixed up in it. I mean, what happens if there's a court case or something? Well, they call our Jackie. Well, then you were there when the police talked to her. She didn't see anything to give evidence about. No, I know, but... Well, I'd still like to know just what did go on there that night. Hello, Peter. Hi. Oh, it was actually Max I wanted to speak to. That's all right. Right, well, we're just on our way out. Oh, Peter. Hi. I was wondering um, if uh, the police have been around yet, and I thought maybe we could have a chat about uh, what you might have thought you saw that night. Max, don't you think we should be going? Yes. I'm, I'm really sorry. No, look, I really do have to speak to you. I know me and Diana, it must have looked bad. But, well, I know you won't give the police the wrong impression, We but shouldn't I be actually... talking in the first place, should we? Now that the police are involved. Peter, what are you saying? Uh, I'm just, just talking to Max, it's not... Yeah, and we shouldn't be discussing it, I'm sorry. <laughs> of course. Well, it doesn't bear discussion, does it? Trumped up charge by some hysterical girl? Max... Whereas anybody who knows Peter could tell you, it's absolute nonsense. <laughs> yes, well, uh, as I say, it's awkward. I'm sure you understand. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's time we went home. Seems a bit desperate to me. Yes, but because he's guilty or because he's innocent? Nice performance, Dad. What's that supposed to mean? Well, public act of solidarity back there. Shame all to get in private to the back of your hand. I was messing around with another man's wife. I happen to believe you didn't rape the girl. Oh, well, that's useful. Seeing as you've elected yourself my PR officer. God, sometimes I regret giving you an education. You didn't give it to me. Education's a right, remember? Yes, and just you remember, your best chance is that we're all seen to be pulling together on this. You, me, and your mother. It's not easy for your mother at the moment. First, it's been me and the shoplifting, and now this. She's very concerned about the repercussions that could happen at school. You're not even listening. I am. That's new, isn't it? Under offer. Yes, well, don't stand there gawping. They might notice you. So? But you happen to be innocent, Dad. I still think I could sort it all out if I just went around the oh, no, 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 don't even think about it. Just stay well clear. In fact, it might be a good idea if you went away for a while. Hmm? Well, you haven't been charged with anything. It's just some police bail pending inquiries. I'm sure they wouldn't mind if you went to, I don't know, your Uncle Hughes or somewhere. Oh, what about the new job I've just started? Just until this is all over. Or until the cork hills move. <sighs> Great, Dad. That's really brilliant. I don't suppose it's crossed your mind that if I move away, it's tantamount to admitting I'm guilty. Ah! Yeah! Hey, I told you, kids, no tea until you got your school uniforms. Be careful now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, take it easy. Take it easy. But you don't fall. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Johnson? Yeah. Look, if it's any more about the party, I Immigration only talk... department, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> we have reason to believe you may have entered the country illegally. We'd like you to accompany us to the police station. When the members here are complaining about the records they're in question. Half well, the men are trying to cop off of them. Oh, Ron. Don't oh, what are they doing dancing anyway? If I've got to ply them with drinks for supporting me, the least they can do is drink them. In the right place for the fun fest, have I? I am. <laughs> All right, George. I heard there was a comic compare, but I'm in fans with drink. It's not so comic. I wound up with nerves more like. No, I'm not. Let's tell you the truth. I haven't been this nervous since that woman on the estate got me in the back of the moby wanting to squeeze me mangoes. <laughs> you never sold mangoes? No, not since then, Dave. <laughs> You'll do all right, Rob. When are you on then, son? Well, after the dance and before the bingo. We're well, spotting a lot, innit, eh? This lot will never hear me for sharpening the pencils. <laughs> Good of to come and support me, don't you? Well, it's the least I can do for an old soldier like myself. Hey, us true blues, we've got to stick together, haven't we, son? Prove I was born here. I've got to go suck some for God's sake. We are acting on information received, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, but from who? All right, look, this has got to be some sort of a joke or a wind-up or something. You don't seriously believe... Do you hold a British passport, Mr. Johnson? Well, no, I don't. Well, I've never needed one, have I? Look, I was born here and I've never been away, not even on holiday. It might be simpler if you just came with us. Look, I can still prove who I am. I to find that birth certificate. There's... Ah, there's another box of stuff in the bedroom. Lee, uh, go and get that box for me, will you, son? At the wardrobe. OK, Dad. It really would be easier on them if you came without a fuss, sir. Well, don't you say me. Not when you come into my home over some bad joke and scare my kids after death. I belong here. It's you that's in the wrong place. You just have to give me a minute to prove it, won't you? I'm sorry. So not this nonsense sorted out. Max, Anna's already had four pieces. She still thinks you're angry with her, you know, over the party. Well, I gave her the stern reproach at first, but now I'm doing my wounded employer bit till the end of the week, just to be sure. Well, you needn't worry. I don't think she'll invite anybody else in next time we go away. Are we inviting her to the round table bonfire, by the way? Yeah, I suppose so. If there's any toffee left by tomorrow. Sorry. What's this, then? My notes for the charity fashion show. Oh. Still going ahead with it, then? Yeah, well, I don't see why not. I'd done most of the work before I left. All I need now is a definite date and a celebrity. Somebody famous. <laughs> no chance of picking somebody infamous around this neck of the woods. Yeah, we're not short on incident. What do you make of Peter Harrison? Don't know. Well, John seems to be very supportive of him anyway. Doesn't look as if Rod's doing the same for Diana. You've been round there, haven't you? Hmm? You didn't say. There was nothing to tell. The police arrived before I got a chance to talk to her. Yeah, but even so, I think we should keep as much distance from them as possible. That's all. I suppose you're right. No, I've got enough problems as it is. Especially the burnt-out shops to deal with for a start. The racist attacks, and it's going a bit, even for this neighbourhood. Yeah, but that hasn't been proved. It's probably just vandals. Hmm. Or a disgruntled customer who's daft enough to buy something from Jimmy Corkill's bargain <laughs> buys. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly Mississippi burning, is it? <sighs> Here. 
Is there anyone other than your brother that can take care of the children whilst you're helping us with our inquiries? Look, you're not really going to take me down the station because I can't find my birth certificate, are you? As I've said, sir, that wouldn't necessarily help. Documents can be easily forged. Is there anyone else? No, no. The mother, she's somewhere in London. So I can't leave the kids on their own. Look, why don't I come down the station first thing, eh? We could fix something with social services. No, no way. Look, please, just give me a minute to try and get hold of a mate. Just one more call. Lee, uh, you take your sister in the bedroom and get a night on, eh? And don't worry, son. I'll just see if Auntie Marcy and Uncle Simba are back from the pictures, eh? Come on, Mars. It was a ram raid along. A ram, he was trying to ram, you know, the, my mobile shop. <laughs> hey, love, if you're going to fall asleep, you won't forget to drop your teeth in the glass, will you? <laughs> I'm going to have to like you to love me now because it's bingo time and I hope a lot of you win and may your felt tips never run dry. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Dixon. Come on, let's hear it. Come on. <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to get the bingo time. We're going to have to get that. And we're going to have to get that. Well, we're going to have to get that. 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 We're going to have to get 12 angry men. Yeah, well, the committee will get lynched if they pick anyone but you. Yeah, you're a great Mr Dixon. Well, maybe just a bit great. <laughs> hang on, hang on, what are you off to? Yeah, we're going home, Dad. We need some taxi money. Well, I said they couldn't go. They don't want to hang around all the bingo. Well, that's unless you're about another drink, please. Yeah, you yourself, will you? Another drink? Half a sound is enough for anybody your age. There you go. And, hey, straight home, do you hear? It was a great night, bro. Great night. Hey, you might fancy coming down my local one day, you know, meet the lads. Yeah, be great, that George. Right, well, uh, gonna go away. <laughs> Hear the verdict. Straight home, as if there's anywhere else to go. Will you speak for yourself? Am I really you, Ben? Don't know, do I? Paul's picking me up in the van. You what? You've only known for five minutes and you've got off with them. So, you said you'd gone off them anyway. Is he the one you went out with and then? Yeah, but I don't mind if she hasn't cast off. Oh, yeah. But he's all right, though, isn't he? Yeah, except he only wants one thing. You never know, do you? Oh, yeah, you're not talk, you. We're not all little Miss Innocent, you know. Oh, fantasy queen or what? Are we haven't left to do anything. <laughs> Not planning on working too late, are you? Uh, just about finished. Yeah. How much do you estimate this fashion show will make, then? Well, a lot, I hope, considering I'm working on a percentage. Depends how many guest tables I sell. And that depends on how big a celebrity I can get. Let me charge the air. Mm. I'm hoping I can find one sympathetic enough to do it just for expenses. Ah. Where do the round table get their celebrities when they have them for dinners? Well, it depends. Whether you want them boiled or roasted. Ah. Uh -huh. No, somebody knows somebody or uh, somebody else. I think. Hang on, hang on. There's another one, and I want to write a note for some juice. And then I vote we make it an early night. Mm. Looks like jukebox jewelry, the first thing we miss. Well, that's it. So, how does it feel to be the wife of the new compere then? <laughs> oh, that's great! <laughs> what did we tell you, Rob? This <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> Gemma's nearly asleep. She doesn't really know what's happening. Neither do I. Look, don't worry about the kids anyway. Cheers, Mars. I'll be back as soon as this stupid mess is sorted anyway. Yeah, Simba will be on his way round in a minute. Do you want me to tell him to go and get Ellis? No. Yeah. He's probably staying at Marianne's. Anyway, you know what Ellis is like. I'm going to make the situation worse. Won't be gone too long. I still can't believe this is happening. It's like some foreign country you read about. Dragging people off in the night. You just had you get into the car. Look, I'm coming, aren't I? Listen, son, this is no big deal. Now, you'd be good for Marcy and Simba. I won't be gone too long, all right? No, don't go. Mum didn't come back. No. Marcy. Come on, Lee. Come on. Come here. Mick. 
everything all right? Don't worry, Max. Won't happen to you. Exciting stuff as ever, and there's more Brookie next Monday at ten past two. Now, coming up in just a few moments, it's our gigantic Coronation Street giveaway. It's a great competition. You can win all sorts of goodies. You can win a beer glass from the Robers Return itself. Has it got beer, beer in it? No, it's not filled with beer, because oh. it wouldn't travel very well on the post. That's but true. you can win the beer glass. And then you can also win the bar mat, or the towel thing is, to mop up the beer when you finish drinking what it. What about the barmaid? Don't get the bar mat. Get the Stop. Bar you know, you're just pointing them now. <laughs> it's a great yeah, competition. Prizes, and, you. and you can win some Coronation Street cobbles as well. Yeah, that's true. And all will be revealed in just a few moments. So stay with us for that. Listen, Rachel, before we get on to that, I have Go to on. make an apology to you about your hair. I have to say, I do think it looks very nice. No, no, I mean, it looks very nice. That's what oh. I'm saying. And I, I think now you've had, a, had the uh, hair chopped off, you look a bit like um, Charlene from Texas. Do you really? Yeah, thank you. Do. You know, it's funny because you look like that bloke from EastEnders. Terrible. You are that bloke from EastEnders, I am, what, Phil Mitchell, you? yeah. I do and talking about EastEnders, my mother used to look like Barbara Windsor when they were younger. She, yeah, she did. People used to, you know, think in the street she was Barbara Windsor. Was that because she had a bra that kept flying off or something? No, she had the same <laughs> hair and face and everything. Oh, wow. But, um, yeah. And people used to come up to her all the time and ask her for autographs and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen, if you think you look like somebody famous off the telly or... I'm telling you, you missed your vocation. You should have been on the stage, Rob. No, I'll happily settle for treading the boards part-time down the Legion. Thank you, George. Mind you, if they do offer me the Royal Variety Show, I'll have to think about getting resolved in Asia. I don't know. Goodbye bonfire night. Oh, Christmas. Will anyone be able to reach them up there? Nah, no, these are for display only. The real stock for selling's in the back. Gonna make the most of me space now that I won't be expanding. <laughs> Have they found out who's coming next door yet? No, I haven't seen Barry Grant since that merry man Max of his passed on the glad tidings. Oh, hello, girls. Did you enjoy your night out down the Legion? Better than all those warehouse rave ups, innit? I think he means raves. Oh, yeah, Taz, it was brilliant. In fact, I think I'm applying for a membership, aren't we? Yeah, life membership. Yeah, it took me to be dead to get in. All right, all right. Didn't stop you three from dancing a night away, did it, eh? At least you two don't look as tired as your mate Leanne. I saw her dragging her heels to school this morning. I hope she's woken up by the time she comes to work. You three did go straight home, didn't you? Yeah, of course we did. Yeah, well, this won't do. Best get off. Don't forget tonight, a few mates I want you to meet. I think you'll get on well with them. Well, Ta-ra, right, Rog. See you, mate. Ta-ra. Hey, Jackie, your mum's shopping's under the counter. Could you take it home for her? I'll just put this away. Mm. Hey, what Leanne got up to last night, then? Well, she did say Paul was only taking her for a ride your arms in the van. Oh, yeah, and he's going to drive her all the way over from Manchester just to do that. Yeah, well, she wouldn't have done anything now. She just likes to make out that she's more grown up than she is. Yeah, but look how fast she got off a pole. I mean, if she's not careful, people will be calling her a slag and everything. Oh, she's not, though. I mean, she lies. She wants to lie she's had sex with Owen. Oh, Sammy's Owen. Yeah. Hey, Jackie, tell your mum I've got none of that Maggie and she likes till tomorrow, will you? Oh, you're not as a margarine, are you? It's on my list. No, you're all right, Marsh. Just that stuff that Dee Dee likes, you know. Oh, and have you got any of that cake with the chocolate chips in? Oh, I seem bad not sweet enough for you these days, eh? Hey? Oh, no, it's for the kids. I thought it might cheer them up a bit. There you go. Looks as though you could use a slice yourself. 
Simba all right, is he? Yeah, he's OK. He's gone to fetch Leah and Gemma from school. Look, don't say anything. I mean, don't spread it round. But it's Mick. I'm really worried and I don't know what to do about it. Mick? Why? What's wrong? The immigration took him away last night. They said they thought he might be an illegal immigrant. Who, Mick? He's not, is he? Oh, great, if even you don't believe him. Oh, no, of course I do. But, I mean, well, he must have ways of proving he's around here, mustn't he? I mean, he's even got a Scouse accent, for God's sake. So go on, then, prove it. If you haven't got a passport, and they say your birth certificate could have been forged. Yeah, but people know you, don't they, Vars? I mean, people know you are. Yeah, who they think you are. The immigration could just say that's who you said you were, who you told them you were from. Well, in that case, you just... It's not that simple, is it? In the end, it comes down to, do they want to believe you? And they'd rather get rid of you. Yeah, but I mean, nobody would want to get rid of Mick, would they? No. So where is he then? Fancy some? No, I'm not hungry, thanks. It might be better going back to work, you know. At least you wouldn't be bored and you don't want to jeopardise your job, do you? I won't. Besides, I do a very good flu over the phone. And I'm more worried about my freedom being in jeopardy at the moment. Oh, it won't come to that. No? Your faith in British justice is very touching, Dad, but they have been known to send the old innocent man to prison. They haven't got enough evidence to charge you. It's your word against Diana's that it was rigged. Yeah, but what if they choose to believe her word? Now why should they? You're only on police bail because they have to investigate these charges when they're made. Yeah, well, why make them? I still don't understand. Who knows what, what her reasons are? But what you have to remember, and what the police will take into account, is that she went willingly into that bedroom with you. You didn't tie her to the bed or hit her or anything, No, did you? I've told you. Well, then, guilt, like we said. Worried when it was too late that her husband might find out, so she shouts rape. Do you really think that's the conclusion the police are going to come to? What else? Like your mother and I'll stick by you. Just take my advice and keep your head down. So haven't you spoke to our Roger? No. You're never going to get it sorted, you know, if you don't talk to each other. It's nothing to talk about. Rod's gone. The house is sold now. Do you think that was a good idea, taking the first offer you had for the police? Well, the Shackleton's are willing to pay the full price if we move out in four weeks. Suits me. Nothing to hang on for now, is there? Yeah, I know, but Diana wants the house is sold. That's it. It'll just make it harder for you and Rod to get back together. Tracy, he was the one who left me. I know, yeah, but... Oh, you know what he's like, Diana? He's a brooder. Give him time, he'd get over it. I didn't do anything for him to get over. There was nothing going on between me and Peter before that party. He, he hit me for nothing. I wouldn't have even been in the bedroom if it wasn't for Rod. Sending Tom out to say he was going to home. Look, Diana, I can see you'd be upset in that, but... Well, don't you think it was a bit dodgy going into the bedroom with Peter Harrison? Not at the time, no. Like you say, I was upset. I think the thing I did wrong was trying to be the sort of person he likes. What do you mean? Well, I knew what you all used to think of me, you know, the blonde bimbo. Look what happens when I try to do something about it. I get raped. Better off when I couldn't read all right. Well, that's got nothing to do with it. Surely now that you've got more confidence that you can do something about it. Yeah, for all the good it's done me. What are you doing? I'm phoning Rod. You should be telling him all this. If you tell him like you've just told me, then he'll have to believe you. I'm not talking to him. Hello? Could I talk to Rod Corkill, please? Thanks. Just talk to him, Diana. You talk to him, he's your brother. He's your husband. He didn't love me enough to believe me in the first place. There's nothing to say now. All right, all right, all right. She might not even be lonely. Come out, buddy. He's not back yet. But he will be soon, won't he, Sinbad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's bound to be. 
As much as that for a bit of a cut? Yes, well, if you want a bit of a cut, there are other salons. I... Be with you in a minute, Mrs Roberts. But if you want it styling properly... Look, she just wants it like Dawn, you know, off Meadowcroft Park. On the telly? No, not at that place. I don't. Come on, I'm going to be late down the ledge centre. I'm supposed to be helping with the swimming girl tonight. Yeah, now in a girl's in shoe uniform. Oh, dear. Do you hear that? I sometimes wonder if this place isn't more your short back and sides than your subtle style. Um, to your coffee. Coffee, please. Thanks. Tell me about it. I've just been to see Diana. And? Well, it's not exactly ideal homes, is it? Oh, I don't know. May as well just change the name to the Flintstones and I've done with it. Hey, look. Look what I've got you. Oh, I like sparklers. I love sparklers, mate. Come on, let's go outside and write our names. It has to be dark. Mm. Yeah, of course it does. He's daft, isn't he, eh? Never mind, we'll have our tea first. Then when it gets dark, we'll go outside and play with him, shall we? Dad! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leo, Gemma, go and get those biscuits through in the kitchen. Go on, put them on a plate nicely, and then you can have some pop as well. Come on, sit down. Simbad, move your mess. Oh, it's not all my mess, you know. Yeah, I know, but you can move it, though, can't you? Oh, I'm moving it, aren't I? Sorry, mate. Good to see nothing's changed while I've been away. So what happened? They just kept me there, sitting in this room until they could prove my identity beyond reasonable doubt. At first I thought, no, that's some kind of joke, this. They'll come back in a minute and say, well, sorry, Mr. Johnson, there's been a mistake. They just left me there. This cop watching me like, uh, like I was dangerous or something. Dangerous. I was wearing myself. Yeah, we didn't know what to do. We thought about ringing a solicitor, but... Just kept thinking you were bound to let you go on there. I stopped believing that about it. What half two in the morning? I thought, what if they don't? What if they don't let me on there? I can't see my kids again. It's like a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, and I bet you wish you could have woken up. Would I have been there if I was white? I wouldn't have been there if I was. I was scared, Simbad. Yeah, I was really scared. You know, um, the worst thing was, though, eh? the worst thing was is that I walked in there saying, this is my country. I came out ashamed because it is. Ah, thanks, sir. You can have cake as well. Yeah, that's nice. Well, I still can't figure out as why they picked on you in the first place. <sighs> what I did say was uh, information received. Yeah, but from who? Yeah, and why would they even think you're an illegal immigrant? It's just harassment, isn't it? Like all that stuff at the pizza parlour, trying to scare us out the neighbourhood. And I told Ellis it was nothing serious. Well, at least if it was that racist mob, it was nobody we knew. I mean, that gang of scum and outsiders, aren't they? I'm not so sure about that. Come on, Mick. I know one or two around here are a bit insensitive, not to mention pig ignorant. There's no out and out racists, is there? No, they didn't used to be. Not till that petrol station owned. You mean George Webb? Oh, come on, Mick. Do you want to believe everything Ellis tells you? I wasn't having any when Ellis said Webb was involved. But now I'm beginning to wonder. Yeah, well, you don't want to let anything Ellis says wind you up, though, Mick. But it's different now, isn't it? Having to go at us at the shops is one thing. Now they know where I live. We're in the other room, then. New tie, George. George. Oh, we're sick. Uh, take the notice of Tommy. <laughs> hey, this is Ron, by the way, Tom. How are you doing? How are you doing, Tom? Hello, lads. All right. Yeah, sit yourself down there, Ron. OK. All right, boys? Yeah. I'll sit here. Uh, sorry, ladies. Uh, there's a snug round the corner, love. It's a bit rowdy in here, you know. Oh. It's all right in here, isn't it, George? Yeah. Well, this is where we hold our meetings, you know. Oh, why? Is this the, uh just a committee table or what? <laughs> Not as formal as that. It's more a meeting of minds, you might say. Hey, before I forget, I've got a good one for you. 
Is this Chinaman, right? Hey, hey, not and now, he's got... Tommy, not now. You're up against a real comedian here. Is that right, Rob? All right. He's a bit of a star down his British Legion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm only happy to me. Hey, I'll tell you something that's not so funny, though. They're only closing Caswell's down. What do you expect? It's the same old story, isn't it? You can't keep your own people in work when they're letting in stuff from all over, can you? You ban foreign imports and you'll solve unemployment overnight. Yeah. Hey, I'm with you there, Tommy, lad. What is Britain? What is Britain doing in the EC, eh? You tell me that. Who oh, knows? I don't know what it's all about me, George. Tell me. I can't stand dusting myself. Come running with another message from Rod, have you? Yeah, well, he just wants me to tell you that he's accepted the offer on the house for definite, even though he was surprised at you saying he could have it. Fine. Only well, I think he was a bit bothered. It means you'll have to be out in four weeks. I know you're that. We take long to pack down. A bit late to be concerned, isn't it? You was the one that sent Mrs Shackleton round to buy the police. Didn't even tell me she was coming. Look, I know you think Rod's been out of order the way he's been behaving. Don't care anymore. I don't believe you. And I don't believe he doesn't care about you anymore either. Yeah, well, he's got a funny way of showing it. Look, I know you feel as though he's let you down, but... Well, you had a long way to fall, didn't you? From the pedestal he had you on. I mean, I've never seen Rod so made up as when he first met you. I remember with the lads and that, he'd never slag you off, not even for a laugh. Not like some of the others do about their wives and that. Well, why was he so quick to believe I was messing with Peter Harrison then? I suppose because he was so scared of losing you. I think he was expecting somebody to take you off him. And then after all this rape business and all that, Rod's doing his head in, that's all. Yeah, well, if he cared as much as you say, he'd be here, wouldn't he? Night, Claudia, and he'll love it, take my word. Do their husbands beat them up or something if they don't like their hair? Women around here seem to really care, don't they? Whether their husbands will approve or not. Is this some more than Friday night ritual where the husbands belt their wives for having a perm? Oh, you haven't brought me up to date on Rod and Diana yet? Well, which sort of detail would you like next? That bad, eh? They're both as bad as each other. All well, still not quiet on the cork hill front, then. Oh, when were they ever? <laughs> I don't know. My mum and dad. My dad and Sheila. My uncle Jimmy. They don't need to buy the news of the world round here off and with all the scandal they need. And now there's Diana. I thought you sympathised with her. Well, I do, yeah. I went with her myself, didn't I? Could have been me. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I just wish I was a million miles away. Hmm. Thought it'd cross my mind. Oh, cheers. Oh, no, no. I mean, are you looking forward to moving to Chester with me? You'd be brilliant. You'd enjoy looking after those salons, wouldn't you? I know, but... Look, half a minute ago, you were talking about being a million miles away. Look, I know, but... I just don't know if it's the right thing. I know the Corkles are a mess and that, but they are my family. So stay here. Run this place. Send me twice weekly reports to Chester on the family's goings on. From the sound of your lot, it's bound to be an ongoing soap opera. Did you get through to the pizza parlor? Yeah. Mike can't wait late again, though. He's made arrangements to go out. Oh, that's my answer. Yeah. yeah, she's just putting Leo and Gemma to bed. Uh, well, Matty's not turning in again. I don't know what I should do. About what? Matty's still giving it the sick note, and Mike can't stop on. Are we all not fit to work? Yeah, but it's a nice taking down the plug hole, isn't it? And I can't ask you and Simba to sit in again. Well, we don't mind, do we? And you're not fit to work. And to be honest, if the kids did wake again and find you gone... Yeah, you're right. I'll nip over when Mike's finished his shift and lock up. I'll walk over with you if you want. Well, you never know who's about, do you? Hey, come on, Simbad. Even I'm not that paranoid, you know. I'm not expecting a men in white hoods job. No, I didn't mean that. I mean, I just don't mind wandering over with you, that's all. Yeah, cheers, mate. Hey, and thanks to both of you for coping with the kids and that, you know. Don't mind, do we, Mas? Nah. And where's Alice, anyway? I can't he stand in for you. Mike says he's gone out with Marianne somewhere. <sighs> he's gonna go mad, isn't he, when he finds us about you getting lifted by the immigration? Yeah. All the more reason for not telling him, though. Yeah, but what if this racist lot tries something else? Yeah, I'm on my guard now, though, aren't I? I'll be all right. We know what Ellis is like. He'll jump to all sorts of conclusions. And what can we prove, eh? Well, I'll go along with that. I don't mind paying taxes to swell the numbers in the army. No, no, I told you that. 
They should be there to defend us, not messing around with this NATO carry on, eh? That's correct, that, you know. The man is dead right. Absolutely. Listen, who's for a bar break, lads? You don't lubricate the old larynx. No, all right. Hey, what do you reckon, Rob? A good group, aren't you? Oh, good set of lads, yeah. Yeah, yeah I knew your face would fit, you know. Pipe is it? You say no, George? You say no. Very kind of you, George. Oh, go on, then. I normally only get them for the newcomers. <laughs> Nice sound, old George. Does he live near you, does he? No, he's got the uh, battery station on the road for my shop, actually. Ah, it's you, is it? The one that George is sorting that little problem out for? Not that it's just for you, of course. I mean, it's more for the community, isn't it, what he does? Sorry, Sam, that would you mean? Getting shot in the darkies from that pizza parlour. Never fear. We'll soon drive them off the block for you, cos they'll take over the whole row of shops if you don't stamp them out. <laughs> See for yourself, can't you? See what? That we're committed. Tommy! Hi. I'm telling you, Ron, you ain't seen nothing yet. George informing immigration was a good first move, but that was just for openers. Don't you worry. George will have plenty more up his sleeve. He'll get rid of the vermin for you. All right there, Ron. Myself a bath. So is there any message, then, for when Rod rings me again? could ask him what he wants me to do with all his clothes and stuff. Well, let me tell him that you want to talk. If he knew he hadn't blown this, you two could sort things out. What the hell's he doing here? Look, I, I just want to talk, that's all. I thought you was on your own, did you? Come to have another go at her? No, look, I can't... I would advise you to take one step into this place, mate. There now. Please just go, will you? No. Not till I've sorted this whole stupid mess out. Fuck you. I think you told to stay away from here. You're on police bail, right? mate. What's it to you? I'm a cop, aren't I? You shouldn't even be talking to her. If a husband had talked to her, I wouldn't be in this mess now, would I? Yeah, husband that must be my best mate. Yeah, well, he shouldn't have walked out on her, should he? She wouldn't have come to me for comfort. Oh, and you gave it to her, didn't you? Look, it wasn't how it looks. It was? You know it was! Peter! What the hell do you think you're doing down there? Leave it, Dad, I'll sort this bloody mess out of it. Kills me! Yeah, well, it's just my... Yeah! yeah. How would you stop it, Belgian? You're yeah. as bad as a husband, you all this macho crap! If you just came out of your bloody cave long enough to listen, you might understand. Smart lad, eh? Smart lad. Pity all right, all right. All right, that's enough. enough. I said that's, that's enough. Out. You home. I said home. That's the use. You better go as well. All this nonsense you've been saying about our Peter. Just you get on the phone to the station if he comes bothering you again. Look. Rod won't come back unless you make the first move, you know. And you don't want to be on your own with all this, do you? Looks like I already am. I've lost everything because of you. My house, my husband. And all I've got left is seeing you get what you deserve. You can't treat me like you did and get away with it. Because I'm worth better than that. And if I have to drag you through the courts to do it, then I will.
never failing to disappoint with its tense storylines mm. in uh, Brookside. That will be back at the same time tomorrow on Living. And keep your eyes peeled for a few programme changes on Living you might want to be aware of. We've got Judge Judy coming up today at 3.30 and The Real Holiday Show will be with us at 4 o'clock. Mm. And if you're battling with a problem and you need some advice or some help or just somebody to talk to or you feel that you're on your own, well, you're not. Because here at Living, we have on our website www.livingtv.co.uk we have the living directory and it's an A to Z of all different types of organisations, help, advice, everything that you could possibly need. You just go to the homepage, click on search it and then you'll find the whole living directory there. Click on which one you want and you'll get all the help that you need. And while you're visiting www.livingtv.co.uk, you might want to email me and Julie because yeah. we're, we're a couple of cyber chicks and we're always logging on it. and seeing who's got in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. So uh, do give us a call and give us your opinions on anything at all we'd like to hear from you. Uh, in a moment, we're going to have a look at a brand new series on Living. It starts tonight. It's called Brighton Rocks. And, cool. and it is a real expose of how the people down... <laughs> Is Look, I'll pay you back as soon as Mick pays me, okay? Look, Michael, I've had the pizza parlour. You know what this George will. Hello, George. Hi, Rob. What was that about the pizza parlour? Eh, uh, nothing, nothing it'll keep. Here. Listen, uh, what time are you on tonight? Well, I'm in work the savvy, so I don't know. Right. <laughs> Kids, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you reckon to the turnout on Friday? Friday? Yeah. You know, well, I just thought I'd sound you out and see if you'll come again, you know, this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, the thing is, George, um, it was all a bit political, really, wasn't it? <laughs> well, that is the point, Ron. I mean, the issues we're addressing are highly political. Yeah, but, well, I'm not so sure that I want to get that involved, really, you know. I mean, it just seemed, well, it seemed a bit heavy to me. People like yourself, Ron, understand the problems we face in this country, right? Right, well... You've got almost a duty to get involved. There's no passion in politics in this country anymore. People don't seem to care. No, honestly, I mean, don't get me wrong, George. You know, I mean, Friday was interesting, but, uh, well, to be honest with you, I think it was all a bit over my head, you know? Hey, hey, we're only discussing a few issues. Hey, we're not a bunch of terrorists, you know. No, 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 I know, you know. But, oh, anyway, I can't go Friday, can I, eh? It's me debut down the Legion as the compa. Fine. Anyway, as long as we know we've got your support. What do you mean, George? Support? Well, you know, coming to the meeting, I mean, it shows a little more than interest, doesn't it? I mean, it's almost... It's membership, really, isn't it? You know? Good morning. Got the bar rose, please, Ron. When he says a couple, he means six, please. <laughs> Playing bingo tonight, then, are you? <laughs> he just loses pens like nobody's business. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing letting your daughter work for that fellow across the road. She'll be coming home in a couple of weeks with swastikas on her arms. Well, she'll just do her work. His views, though. Ellis. Yeah, but she wouldn't listen to all that stuff anyway. And don't forget, she went out with our Michael's mate, Keith, didn't she? And he's coloured. And I tell you what, to be very truthful with you, you know, I thought all that illegal immigrant lark was horrible. I mean, your mix really one of us, you know, and whoever did that was way out of order. What are you talking about? Well, you know that business over your mick getting lifted by the immigration? Oh, that'll just be... It'll just be kids messing around, won't it? Um, I'll get you some biodomes, then. Immigration? What's he talking about? I smell a rat here. I'm sure Mick would have told you if it was something important. Yeah? Uh, one pound twenty, please. Cheers. 
And think about what I said. About your Jackie getting corrupted. Noticing the sign on the window, though. Come in, come in. It's about time someone owns a charity shop around here, isn't it? What's going on here, Dex? Well, like the notice says, I've opened a charity shop. What do you think? Oh, it's marvellous. Those who've got, have got, and those without should always get. That's what I say. So when was all this sorted out? Not before time. Someone should have done this ages ago. Well, it uh, came about by chance, really. Um, as you know, I've got a bit of time on my hands, and Caffod's always after funds. So with Jimmy Corkle's misfortune, it was the ideal opportunity for me to step in. So all this was done with Barry Grant's blessing? Yeah. yeah. It's almost as good as the Pope's, really. Oh! <laughs> God, very good. Mind you, I thought you might have wanted to expand your little empire into here. Yeah, a couple of months should see me through the busiest period of the year. Oh, all right, Christmas. Should do well, shouldn't he? Now, listen, love, I want to volunteer my services for this place. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. Well, Margaret's also offered to do some help when she can. Well, as you know, my services are very much in demand by our Tracy, as she's my first employer. But if I can be of any help... Well, I'm very grateful, thank you. Oh, and I hope you'll be of help to our Diana when all this business of hers comes to court. Well, our Jackie's told the police everything she knows, which is basically nothing. And I'm afraid I saw nothing untoward. Well, if you are called, I hope you support our Diana. She needs it. I don't know, if it's not one thing, it's another day. Eh? Yeah. Guess what I finished up Friday night? I went out for a quiet pint, as I thought, with George Webb from the petrol station. And it turns out to be a meeting of this white purity thing, and he's in it. What, you went there? Yeah, but only for the bevy you know what I mean? And I didn't know it was a meeting. Then this fella lets it slip that George and a couple of other fellas were behind Mick getting lifted as an illegal immigrant. What? George Webb did that? And of course, I have to go and stick me big foot in it, don't I, and blaze all this out in front of Ellis Johnson. <laughs> what did he say? Well, fortunately, I don't think he caught on, but I tell you what, it's getting really dodgy. And you got our Michael, a white guy, working with two black faces. And Jacqueline's working over there with a bloke who hates blacks and he's in a racist organisation. Yeah, you think you're getting this out of perspective slightly? Hey, you should have been with me in that pub Friday night, if you think that. They were practically handing out the white hoods with the eye holes in them. Yeah, well, could all come to a head, couldn't it? Well, that's what I'm frightened of. I'm worried to death. God, we're right in the middle of it all, aren't we? I don't want to see my kids get hurt. I'll have to persuade them to pack in the jobs before things get out of hand. Mm, all those people at that party. I bet they all say they didn't say a thing. Oh, Nan, don't interfere, cos you'll just mess everything up. I'll do what I have to do. What's she going with us? Well, I suppose you'll find out sooner or later. Diana went to a party the other night and, well, she got into this situation with a fella and it turns out that it could be rape. Rape? Well, who's the bloke? Someone off the close. Peter Harrison, you know him, his mum and dad bought the house off Terry. Well, it's wrong giving him a hiding or what? Oh, is that your answer to everything? I thought you'd moved on from all that. Well, this is personal, isn't it, Trace? Yeah, well, she doesn't need any violence around her at the moment. She's cracking up. And all Rod's gone off and left her. He's gone to Hull. Well, because she was raped? No, he got off before that. But I don't think he's coming back. Excuse me a minute, love. Well, that's big of him, isn't it? Well, you're only the sister-in-law, and you're managing to stick by. Yeah, well, all that might change. Mr Kennedy's offered me a job in Chester. You kept that quiet, didn't you? Well, you're a bit wrapped up in your own life, aren't you? Opening nightclubs and that. Well, life moves on, Trace. Yeah, no, but I just feel dead tight leaving her when she needs us. I know life moves on, and I don't want to seem like I'm deserting the Coal Hills problems, like, but I've got a good opportunity to further myself here. Sure, it's just the opportunity of work you're looking for. Why, what else would there be? Well, I mean, Mr Kennedy. 
He hasn't got that many rough edges, has he? And maybe that's what you're looking for. Maybe I don't know what I'm looking for. Come on, we'll never get there. No wonder the council's skit, sending its education officers off to Southport to posh hotels for conferences. Are you sure Mick won't mind you taking some time off to come with me? Oh, no problem. I've set everything up for Mike and I'll be back before it gets really busy. So what will you do while I'm listening to boring lectures on time management and performance indicators? Oh, like I said, I thought I'd do a bit of shopping and uh, I thought maybe we could do lunch, darling. Oh, you're buying me lunch. And you let me drive. All right. Hiya. Mmm. Ah, oh, Marcia, the very woman. Oh, it's not an orgy, is it? No, we just wanted a quick word. It's about Ron Dixon saying something about Mick and some immigration stuff. Just leave it, Ellis. Leave what? He said something about some kids messing around. I mean, what's it all about? Oh, look, it's all finished with. It was over within hours. What was? Someone rang the immigration and said there were illegal immigrants living in Mick's house. What? It was an anonymous phone call. They took him down the police station and held him there. That's terrible. What happened to the children? Oh, they didn't take them, thank God. No means Simbad looked after them till it was all cleared up. Anonymous phone call, my ass. This is George Webb's idea of a joke. What the hell didn't anyone tell me? Because your reaction is so predictable. I mean, look at you. This is my brother we're talking about. And it's your brother who handled the situation the way he wanted. And no matter how cowardly and callous the person who made the phone call is, Mick obviously doesn't want you involved. So leave it. Please. Right. Let's go to Southport. I was just talking to Julia, so I thought I'd pop round and have a chat. Yeah, was she telling you what a mess of my life I've made? No. She's very worried about you. We all are. Who's we? But you don't want slagging me off. Can't keep me marriage together, and then all this with Peter Harrison. You've got to stop blaming yourself. I feel terrible. I can't sleep overnight. If I do, I have nightmares. This whole business is bound to be difficult. If it gets anywhere. It's going to be horrible. I'm going to have to stand up in court, and the newspapers might be there. I'm going to have to explain my whole life. When I lost my virginity, what knickers I was wearing. Did I enjoy it? I mean, what am I supposed to say to that? Cos I was there on that bed with a the man. They're going to say I was enjoying it. Diana. Listen to me. We're women. And we're very definitely made differently from men. The way men are, they could have sex with a donut and enjoy it. You've got to keep on remembering. You were raped. You've got to keep that firmly in your mind. You did not consent to having sex. Will they believe me? I don't know. If it does go to court, it's going to take a lot of strength to get through it. But I know you can do it. I was just practicing my signature. What for? Well, in case you have to sign anything, like checks and things. First thing you need is the checkbook. Bit of mess our Michael got into. What's this? J A C Q U I? Oh, it's just the way I spell my name now. What's wrong with the old way? Well, it wasn't very uh, trendy or sophisticated, was it? Oh, you're only working in the petrol station, aren't you? Yeah, well, I've got plans, you know. So, what did you want me for anyway? Well, er. Uh... To tell you the truth, love, I've been thinking more and more about your work in here, you know, and, well, I think your mum's probably right, isn't she? Why? Well, I mean, you know, you've, you've got a course to do, haven't you? You know, you've got to get too tired working here. Well, yeah, well, you were right behind me when I got the job. Yeah, I don't know, but, well, you know, she's convinced me now. Oh, uh, when? Look, Jack, some things don't always need explaining, all right? Now, I'm just asking you, as your father, to pack in working in here. I want you out of this place. Yeah, but, Dad, you've always told me to support myself as much as I can. And I'm starting to do that. Look, I don't want to keep asking you and my mum for money all the time. So I'll have to stay. Okay. So 
sorry about the mess, cottage industries and all that. Um, can I get you a drink? Uh, coffee, please. So, how are you? I was sorry to hear about your losing the baby. Thanks. Having a holiday has helped me get over it. A bit of a shock to find myself pregnant in the first place. Do you think you're overdoing it a bit, bringing work home as well? Probably. So, how are you? Well, our wonderful agency has been bought out by a larger group. So the accountants have had a field day. Rationalised and now I'm surplus to requirements. Oh, I'd heard the rumours, but... Yeah, well, they were all true. So, to be honest, that's why I'm here. Now that I'm jobless, I'm asking round in case anyone knows of anything good going. Oh, Karen, I'm sorry. You're a good boss, even if I did want your job. I just wish I'd had the nerve to do what you did. Your letter of resignation caused a real stir. So, keeping busy? Set up as a PR consultant, I've heard. Yeah, that's a charity fashion do I'm working on. Excuse me. Hello. Is uh, Max there, please? No, but he should be back soon if you want to come in and wait. Thanks. I just wanted a word about the uh, shop development. Uh, this is a friend of mine, Karen Clark. We used to work together. Nice to meet you. Have a seat. Coffee? Hey, uh, no, thanks. You look busy. Yeah, I was just saying to Karen. It's a charity fashion show I'm organising. You know, celebrity, decent raffle, good meal. Have you sold all the tables? No, none yet. Still in the planning stages. Well, you can put me down for one. <laughs> They're not fully priced yet. Well, you can put me down for two, even. Hey, how many to a table? Um, eight, I think. Have you got a big name yet? Uh, no, that's my sticking point at the moment. I've asked Max to see if he can help. Yeah, I know a couple of big-name footballers. I might be able to get them interested. Oh, that's great, thanks, but I need them to do a bit more, really, you know, speech, auction, compare. My brother's girlfriend works at the Beeb. She might have a good contact. Oh, if you could get someone known nationally, that would really put bums on seats. Um, look, ladies, uh, I'm a bit busy and I've got a few things to do, so I'll have to get off. Um, if you could just do me a favour and tell Max to meet me round at the uh, nightclub tomorrow. Huh. Right, uh, it's nice to meet you. I might see you at the charity event, Danny. I hope so. Bye. Who is he? Barry Grant. He owns a lot of property around here, which Max manages for him, and he's just opening a nightclub. And is he attached? I thought you were involved. Well, is he? Don't think so. No. Good. I'll definitely have to come to your fashion show now. That's it. Let's open your chair. That's your shop. So if you've got anything you don't want to trace, now's the time. Actually, Nana might be having a big clear out soon. Why not? Well, Brian's asked me to run the shop that he's opening in Chester. Oh, so you're moving out there? Well, maybe, but I just feel like I'm deserting Diana and our rod, you know, especially with everything that's going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, hello, love. All right. Um, have a seat, Di. I just thought I'd come get my hair done, you know, a braid or something, or anything. Would you like a drink? Oh. Well, you sit down there and get made a fuss off. I'm all right, honest. I just wanted to tell you that, well, I... If you're going to say you're sorry for all that throwing stuff around this morning, well, don't worry about it, love. We've had worse things happen in this family, haven't we, Chase? Yeah, Dad drove his car all around the neighbours' lawns once. No! What I was going to say is, well, I was talking to Patricia, and I think I'm starting to sort everything out in my mind now. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I just want to say thanks to you and Tracy for supporting me through all this. All right, Barry. All right, Ron. What can I do for you? And don't ask for the rent reduction. All right, what is it, then? Well, it's a charity shop, isn't it? I thought we had an arrangement. Well, I've uh, negotiated an arrangement with Derek now, haven't I? All oh, right, just like that. Look, Ron, when I come back, the place had squatters in it, it's been firebombed, I just want someone in there, don't I? Yeah, but I was going to pay you good rent for that place, wasn't I? Well, what do you want me to do, Ron? Do you want me to throw your brother-in-law, an ex-priest, out onto the street, eh? No, I don't, but what I'm saying is that we thought we were... Oh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, you can explain to him yourself, can't you? Derek, come over here a minute, will you, mate? I didn't want this. Derek, can you just tell Ron what our little arrangement is, please? Ta-da, Ron. 
Well, you still can't believe I've got my own premises? No, no. <laughs> just can't believe Granty's charity, that's all. So you haven't seen Ellis then? No. I've been back a couple of hours now as well. Do you want a pizza while you're waiting? No, Tara. Are you all right? You're not dead worried about something. I am. I told Ellis something about that George Webb. And it might cause a lot of trouble if he kicks off. What was it? Oh, you best off not knowing. Uh, your Sinbad's looking for you, Moss. My Sinbad? Well, nobody else will have him, will they? <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell him you said that, but I'll see he gets to know. Look, um, well, I've been thinking, you know, I've been uh, mulling things over and... Oh, sounds like trouble. Well, seeing as how our relationship has got better, well, well, I was wondering if you'd consider coming to work in the shop, you know? Be a few extra bob in your pocket, won't it? Well, I'm not against the shop, like, but... This is more my style, you know, a telly, radio, a few sounds like. Yeah, actually, you know, I was sitting about getting a telly, you know, just a small one for the county, you know, help the hours pass by. Nah, thanks for the offer, like, but... Look, Michael, I'm asking you to seriously think about not working in here. I'll, uh... Well, I'll make your money up. What? Look, I want you out of here. Why? Because I can train you up, can't I? I can teach you how to run a business. Dad, what are you talking about? Well, it's this George Webb business. No, I knew it'd be something like this. Look, I'm only trying to protect me kids. I'm telling you, something is going to happen. Either the near or the garage, but something's happened. I can feel it. Look, I'm staying with Alice on this one. He's the only one prepared to do anything about it. How do you mean? Well, he's heard something about Webb, and apparently this might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Oh, bloody hell. Look, Dad, we're not going to defeat racism or racists by running away. I'm sorry, but I'm staying put. Sorry, mate. I didn't see you there. <laughs> Idiot. You nearly killed me there. No, no, just an accident, George. That was no bloody accident. Do you see that? Do you see that? Minding my own business. Nearly got myself killed. See what the light run? Hey? Savages. Oh, you can do better than that, George, you boy. I'll need a witness. Hey, hey, I'm sorry, mate. I really didn't see anything. Everyone saw what you did. It's just an accident, George. Saw, didn't you? Yeah, you saw. Because you were sat in the bloody You car, leave her out of this! Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah! Come on, behave hey, come yourself! It's not even worth bothering hey, with, Michael, mate. you keep out of this, yeah, all right? He's been working with this scum too long. Oh, me! I'm scum Stop right. it! What the hell's got into you? I'll sort you out, sunshine. Yeah, shove it, Webb. I told you, didn't I, Ron? I told you what they were like. Scum. Ellis, what's all that about? Why don't you just get on together? I haven't got a problem, Ronnie. He just doesn't want to get on with me. That doesn't excuse you almost running someone down, no matter how extreme his views are. I don't take any crap from anyone, especially someone who tries to stitch up my brother and his family. You haven't got any evidence for that. He's all the evidence I need. And being around's enough. It was only luck, not skill, that you didn't run him down. Yeah, but if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Just get out of my way. All right, all right, look, look. Look, I know I got carried away. I said out of my I way. I said sorry. Look, I know I screwed up. Oh, you do have a mastery of the understatement. Will I see you tonight? You'll be lucky if you ever see me again. Brookie, of course, same time tomorrow, right here on Living. Now, earlier on, we were looking at some of the stories hitting the headlines today, and there's one about Cherie Blair managing to stop the publication of a book by the friend of the Blairs' previous nanny. Do you follow all that? Basically talking about what it was like to be with the Blairs and not being terribly complimentary. So she wanted to stop all that, wanted to protect her family, and she's managed to have it stopped. What do you think of that and the way that she does the right thing and stands up and protects her family? Let us know on the phone or the email. Also, the guy who went to fetch his wife from with her...
shopping in a helicopter and landed on the end of Clapton Pier. Now, come on, admit it. You'd love it, wouldn't you? At least you wouldn't have to carry your shopping home. What do you think of that? Or any other of the news stories, you can phone us on 0870-900-8650 or email us. Of course, there was that lovely story as well of Julia Roberts looking totally gorgeous, sploshing through the weather in Venice. And talking of sploshing, I've got lots of living umbrellas... Oh, I say, living umbrellas to give away. Look at this, isn't it fab? Got lots of these to give away. You just have to give me your funny umbrella stories. Where have you left it? Who have you damaged? Uh, all of those kind of things. They are then. I saw Mick coming back from taking Jen and Leo to school. Thanks. All right. Hi. Hello, right, Mick. All right, Frank. How's things? I sound. Good ask Sammy coming out today to see your old dad. He coming as well, is he? Yeah, when he finishes milk round. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, Frank. When? Male humour, eh? <laughs> hey, listen, you got time for a coffee? Mm. Hey, you missed Ellis, though. He's uh, gone down the wholesalers. I didn't call to see him, actually. <clears throat> I'm just off to a school management meeting. I thought I'd drop by. Sound a bit down. Is it any wonder? Oh, I see. Fierce little lover's tiff, eh? <laughs> Negative, really. Well, didn't Ellie say anything about yesterday? No. You know, sit down. Oh, he just popped in and uh, handed over the takings. He found out, or rather got it out of Marcia, that you'd been lifted by the immigration people. Put two and two together, decided it was the man in the petrol station's fault, and then proceeds to try and run him down in broad daylight. What? The man fell right in front of the car. We missed him by inches. I couldn't believe it. <sighs> George Webb's involvement, it went through my mind a few times, but, but I've got too much to lose taking the law into my own hands. Well, Ellis has nearly lost me through it. I don't know whether I want to live with such violence. Hey, come on, Marianne. Don't ditch him because of this. He'll be thinking that he did it for me. He's just hot-headed, that's all. He nearly killed someone. And I wouldn't excuse him for that, but you've got to get inside his head. I mean, I felt like killing someone when the immigration lifted me the other night. Ah, oh, it's probably the last straw with the debts piling up. But still. Yeah, yeah. Mortgages, loans. Kids need new clothes, rent. I think I might have to have a word with the shop's landlord, see if I can come to some sort of arrangement. I didn't realize things were so heavy. Yeah. Listen, you haven't come here to make me go on about debts. Look, this racist stuff, it was bound to come to a head sometime, you know. Yeah. Well, where will it end, Mick? You know, you know about these sorts of things. There's no real end to it. Look, Ellis reacted and, well, he just gets really passionate about things. Passionate? Yeah. Listen, Marianne, I'm not bullying you about this, but our kid feels more passionate about you than anyone or anything I've ever known. So give him a chance, eh? He needs someone like you to keep him in check. I'll get the coffee. You know, with the investment you're putting into this place, I don't know why you don't go for somewhere bigger or somewhere in the centre of town. Yeah, well, bigger is not always best when it comes to clubs, Max. And secondly, it's easier opening a club in town. It's paying the protection money that hurts. Oh, I see. And besides, it's easy to park now, dear. I mean, people don't always want to take the cars into town in case they get broken into, etc. No, I suppose not. God, it's going to be heavy work for somebody lugging the crates up from downstairs, isn't it? Well, I'll employ some fifth barman tonight. <laughs> now, about this uh, liquor license. Now, I'd always seen that as pretty straightforward, so. Well, it is. But it would be nice when we put the application through if we had the cards stacked in our favour. Sorry? Well, you must know someone, Max. I mean, wheels within wheels. Right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll do some asking around. Good. I mean, I don't want the opening slowing down, you know what I mean? Mm. I hope there's no more fires. I think we've seen the last of them. Well, I'm not so sure, you know. 
latest theory is it was some sort of racist attack. This corporal had that black lad working there. Keith. Oh, that's just rumours, that. Like I say, we've seen the last of them, Max. Well, I hope you're right. Got enough to worry about with having more damage done to property. Oh, we haven't heard about that. Um, the party at yours, Diana Corkin. Oh, yeah, don't remind me. I mean, it's a terrible business. Well, it should be castrated if it's true. Yeah. Well, apparently hasn't been charged yet. Well, let's hope he is. Yes, well, I was talking to Patricia yesterday and he almost had to talk her into carrying on pressing charges. She's a busy lady, Patricia, isn't she? I'll be happy when she starts getting paid some fees. Um, that friend of hers seems all right. Who? Oh, Karen. Yeah, Karen Clark was there, wasn't she? She used to be Patricia's boss. Quite a career-minded lady. Sounds just my type. Hmm. Well, perhaps I could arrange dinner sometime. Uh, you come over to us. Sounds great. Uh, see if I can find a window in my diary. <laughs> Jackie's mum, aren't you? I, uh, I met you in Edinburgh, didn't I? Mm, I remember. I've just come down to visit John Moore University. Really? Mm, so I'm just hanging around there, you know. Ah, Jackie works here. I don't think her boss will be too happy if he sees you hanging around. Well, as far as he's concerned, I'm just cleaning my van, aren't I? Right, well, don't be making a nuisance of yourself. Yeah, you can trust me, Mrs. Dixon. What's that? This is the old passion wagon. It comes in pretty useful, actually, you know, for, um... Well, you know, for sleeping in. You know, in case you break down or something. Hi, Mrs. Dixon. Hi, Eliane. Is uh, Jackie in today? Yeah, I think she's in later. Okay. Hi, Paul. You all right? I thought you might have got out your school uniform. Didn't have time. I'll get changed after them. So, um, are you sticking around? I don't know, really. Just got a couple of things to do. Well, you know how it is, don't you? So, um, can't you wait until I finish work? Well... I don't know, really. I mean, I get a bit bored hanging around here. And I'm going to see you, well, nothing happens, does it? What do you mean, nothing happens? Well, well, to be honest, I don't know if you're too young, you're not. I'm not old. I mean, Jackie's old and a bit more mature, at least. Uh, do you mind getting back to work, please? This isn't a youth club. I'm oh, sorry, I'm coming now. Listen, I've no objections to you being a customer, but don't keep me staff from the work, all right? Yeah, no problems, mate. Because he goes on his dinner. Please. Yeah, all right, then. I'll see you later. Then. Which thing? <laughs> Match your eyes. <laughs> and you could wrap Giles and Evelyn in these and lose them in the canal, couldn't you? Could do. No, you don't. I wonder whether anyone was seriously going to buy any of this stuff. Yeah, well, it might be the 90s, but there's still poverty, you know? Yeah. So are you going to do it properly? They don't have different sections for, like, dresses and underwear and stuff. Well, I hadn't really thought about smalls. Smalls? You seen the size of this? <laughs> Lost weight, then? All right. Yeah. How's things going? Oh, not too bad, really. Uh, it's going to take a bit of time for the word to get around. But, uh, well, I've already been promised two mentions. It's one on local radio, and you were in the paper. Yes, please. I thought you might have let me and Ron know that you're moving in next door. Well, I came round the other night, but you weren't in. You haven't got anything for us, have you? I'll have a look for you. That'll be something the kids have grown out of. And our Ron's still hoarding stuff like nobody's business. Yeah, Ron was a bit tense the other day. Oh, yeah, I know. I think this stuff with our Jackie, this lad Paul hanging around for her. Didn't want to go drunk in Edinburgh. Yeah, well, lots of kids do it, don't they? Yeah, but this one's got a bed in the back of the van. Bed? Yeah, a bed. All right. All right. What's going on here, then? Looking for old stuff? Well, uh, not so much old as uh, useful when unwanted. All right. Should have a couple of old car manuals there, bring them in. Oh, great, yeah, yeah. So who's this uh, Catholic lot, then? It's a Catholic charity organisation. Oh, left footers, eh? Still no sweat, I'll still bring them in, even though the Pope does wear a dress. <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, our Sammy's calling around later if you want to chat with him. All right, yeah, I'll come round. My boss lets me have some time off. <laughs> I'll see you then. Bye. Left so left footer. Some supposedly funny expression for Catholics. Mm. I'll finish the drinks. You seem almost as tense as Ron. 
Well, to be absolutely honest, I'm made up be doing all this stuff for Catherine, but I'll have my heart set on this place for a florist. What, a florist? I thought the wrong was going to expand with newspapers. So he thinks. Who? Why a florist? Oh, a fancied one. Mm. Yeah, well, look, I'm only here till Christmas. You want to get in quick before somebody else applies for it. Well, where are you off then if you're not scared? I'm going to see Diana. I bet you're going for the kip. Hey, I hope you know you're renting that pizza parlour out to a right psychopath. Beg your pardon? Yeah, one of your tenants tried to run me down yesterday. I think that's a matter for the police, don't you? Oh, you're all the same round here, aren't you? One big happy family. Mind me, we've got business to get on with here. Too busy to notice what's going on underneath your noses, hey? Well, you'll learn. You'll learn. All right, boys. Princess Nee Blake's house on the locals, mate. You are? Uh, George Webb making some kind of allegation. Yeah, well, less of the better, eh? Look, uh, could I have a word with you sometime about the rent on the shop? Well, if it's uh, an official inquiry, it'll have to be done through my uh, secretary. I'm sorry. So you're paying to do it, mate? All right, uh, I'll be in touch with you. You handle things efficiently? Well, I can only do it the one way. Not if the chairs are right. Maybe we could do more business. Jackie just climb into the back of that Paul's van. Oh, come on, Jackie's not like that. Give her a chance to explain. All right, then, come on. I'm not sure this is such a good idea, you know. She's in there, I know she is. But don't you have just gone for lunch? It's going to be very embarrassing if you're running. What do you think I feel? She's my daughter. Jackie, are you in there? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, Mrs. Dixon. enough to do looking after her own house and the kids. You still getting on well with her then? Hey, I'm well happy with her. There you go, Sam. Happy first wedding anniversary. Oh, thanks, Dad. They're lovely. But you thought I'd forgotten, eh? Oh, no. I knew you'd remember. I just didn't want to remind you that it's also that Jamie and Mum walked out. Yeah. I was thinking about that this morning. Oh, thanks. That's lovely. And I love the cake. Good. And I've checked the ingredients. There's no dead animals in it. <laughs> so, so how do you feel a year after splitting up? Ah, I don't know, love. It's strange, really. I mean, I know we weren't getting on great. But I just kept telling myself, well, it's only a phase we're going through. So I set out. Get a box stuff if we work at it. But when she told me upstairs in that bedroom that she was leaving, well, I was gobsmacked. I mean, I know we hadn't been getting on properly for years, but I just couldn't see it coming. Well, are you glad it's finished? Sometimes I am. But other times. Well. I mean, I know your mum's obviously happier now. But it's just other times, love. I, I just feel like a failure. I mean, I wasn't able to keep my own wife happy. 
All it takes two to tango. Stacy, you. Anyway, what about that granddaughter of mine? What about Owen? Is he keeping you happy? Yeah. Everything's really settled down now. Louise has eaten us out of house and home. Oh, she doesn't know what laugh. And what about Owen? Oh, he's great as well. The conservatory sales are slowing down a bit, especially with the bad weather coming on now. It's a pity that firm of us doesn't do double glazing, you know. That would make his future a bit more secure. Yeah, well, well, it won't make much difference to us because, well, in the long run, it, it will be better if Owen goes back to college. Why well, is he still thinking of doing it? Well, we've worked it out on paper, Dad, and, well, we reckon we can scrape through what with my wages and his grant. Sam, I know the lad's got brains, but what was college like? Well, it just stops a man from earning a decent living to keep his family. Dad, things have changed. Well, if Owen doesn't get his qualifications, he'll always be in and out of jobs. But qualifications these days, love, don't guarantee a job. Look, the bottom line is, if Owen wants to go back to college, and I want him to be happy, because, well, because he's my husband, and if going short for a couple of years secures a better future for Louise, well, then I'm right behind him. Oi! What the hell's going on here? I've warned you about hanging round here, haven't I? Uh, well, I thought she was having dinner break, didn't I? Don't get clever with me, sunshine. This is private property. Now, clear off. I'm sorry, Mr Webb. Sorry. Do you know there's a fella out the front in the porter cabin on his own? He could have walked out with the till or anything. Yeah, she said she was sorry, mate. Mate? Mate? Don't you call me, mate. Get in your van and clear off. Yeah, I can check me aisle first. All right, I'm going. Uh, I'll catch you later, Liam. Don't let me catch you round here again. This is way out of order, lady. I'm really sorry, Mr. Webb. Sorry? I should think you are. Do you know this is work? You don't go deserting your post to have a quick... Well, necking session round the back. Oh, don't start crying. Go and get back in the office. But I'm warning you, girl. Anything like this happens again and you're down the road. Down the road? Sat. This is nice, isn't it? Yeah, and Katie's getting your clothes all the time. When I was at school, all we had was our school gear and a spare pair of kecks for the weekend. Did she choose it herself? I think she went to town with her own distance daughter, Jackie. Oh, she's hanging around with her now. Yeah, she seems all right. Her dad's pretty strict with her, you know. Wants to know where she's going. Gives her a sensible time to get in. Oh, wouldn't that suit you, wouldn't it, Dad? Too right, yeah. I can't stand the thought of kids hanging around. Do you want to get into trouble? Oh, wait, Dad. Never mind away, oh, hey, Dad. What about that Leanne one that I Katie you snuck around with? Yeah, well, she was just some silly girl, wasn't she? Hey, Sammy, she nearly broke your marriage up. No, oh, that was one kid I was glad to see the back of. I'm glad that I Katie stopped knocking around with her. Yeah, well, you can't choose a friend for her, Dad. Well, that's true, I know, but I'm just glad she's knocking around with somebody off the close now. Hey, they even went to the British Legion the other night. The Legion? Oh, Casey? Yeah, well, they have some good nights on there. Well, I think it's a bit old for her. Well, my people. Do you have a disco? She seems to like it. And does she have a drink when she's there? Well, no. Not that I know of, anyway. Look, Dad, I know she's different from me, but you should check in now. Sam, I'm trying not to make things into problems. Hey, they haven't even started yet. Wait till she's bringing a different fella home every week. There you go, two pounds. Lovely, thank, thank you very much. Hiya. All right. I thought these might be useful. That blusher, or have you seen something embarrassing again? I don't know if I was more embarrassed or relieved that it wasn't our Jackie in that van. I thought that Paul lad was your Jackie's boyfriend. Ah, oh, Jackie thinks he is. Oh, you didn't tell her? I don't know. It's better to say he was too tiny with her own friend in the back of a van in broad daylight. All right. Hiya. Hiya. All right. Just thought I'd come and see how the new tenants getting on. Very well, thank you. Yes, we sell all sorts. You name it, we'll try and get it. All proceeds to charity. Nice to see the place being used properly, eh? Shall yeah. I sort of this stuff abroad? Ah, yes, please. Yeah, thanks. Give you a hand. Oh, thanks. So, did you get this place at a reduced rent because it's for charity? No, I got it absolutely free. Free? Yeah. Never ceases to amaze me, the charity of some people. <laughs> I wish someone would throw some in my direction. Yeah, well, I suppose it's uh, still pretty tough for people, isn't it? You're not kidding me. Look, uh, things are a lot tougher than. Um, Ah, it doesn't matter, Dick, so I'll see you later. Oh, Nick. Look, um, whatever it is, it won't go any further, you know. OK. 
um, the kids need some new gear. And uh, what I was going to say was that if anything came in, so long as it was in really good nick, because I don't want them feeling. It's okay. I'll be discreet. Cheers, Daisy. See you, mate. Take your coat off. Did I get any sleep pills off the back? Yeah. She'll be down soon. If you know if this does get to court, she's gonna get a real hammer, don't you? Yeah, we all know that. Especially Di. Yeah, if that's not available, she's gonna need a few shoulders to cry on. And I might have to move to Chester. I've been offered a job and that I just feel like I'm deserting it. Well, she's gonna fold, isn't she? There's no way she's gonna take the pressures of a court case. All right, Di. Oh, yeah, those things. Well, okay, you know. Do you want a drink? Please. Please, said you've seen Rod. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's fine. He's all right. Under the circumstances, you mean? Look, I thought I'd come round to see you for a little chat, see how you were doing. Well, apart from my nightmares, not eating properly, and wondering what people are sending behind me back, well, things are fine, yeah. Liam, I've got a few things to say, and um, I think you might find them a bit personal, like. Eh? Oh, it's all right, say what you want in front of Tracy, she's family. Um... Brian Kennedy's offered me this job and... Well, it's in Chester. Oh, it's all right. I'm starting to realise what it is to be a cork hill. If you can get out before it gets tough, then do it. Oh, I know I shouldn't open that van door, but I did think our Jackie was in there. It's done now, isn't it? Look, maybe I'm not the right person to be talking to you about this, but I just think you should be very careful. And I don't mean where you do these things. I mean, you know nothing about this lad. We go out together now. Well, I just hope you're protecting yourself, and I think you know what that means. Well, if I'll just come to Chester, you know. Tomo? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be bitchy. It's just all getting me down. It's all right. See, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. It hasn't really started yet. What hasn't started? The pressures of doing something like this. What? Trying to get a rapist caught and tried? Oh, come on, the guy hasn't even been charged yet. And he won't be until I convince him I've been raped yet. Just look at it from my point, as a bobby. Oh, like what Rod's doing, you mean? Well, he might have a point, mightn't he? And what's that supposed to mean? All right. You go with a man who's been giving you lifts away. Someone who you know reasonably well. Don't take sides, Tomo. Hold on. You go into the bedroom of your own free will. Yeah, and I'm going to argue with that bit. Just hold on. You go in the bedroom of your own free will. You get on the bed with him of your own free will. And it's defence if this ever gets to call, but make out you consented to all that went on in that bedroom. And don't I know it? I know it was stupid and I shouldn't have gone in there. All gone on the bed, but... But nothing, Diana. Case closed. Rod will never believe you were raped, and neither will a jury. I've put Rod to the back of my mind now. I was doing this to prove to him that he didn't have a slut for a wife. But I don't care anymore. I'm doing this for me. And no matter what Peter Harrison's defence throw at me, I'll be there to the end. And I will convince that jury that I was raped. Very determined, isn't she? More Brookie, same time tomorrow here on Living. Coming up next, it's Maury. He's got some wonderful surprises for his guests this afternoon. At 3.30, it's Judge Judy in a slightly bewildering case of a girl who is suing a man for breaking her windscreen, except it was her who ran him over in the first place. It doesn't seem to be his fault. I think Judge Judy will make mince to that one at 3.30. And the real holiday show is at 4 o'clock. Four lads from Weymouth are off to Ibiza. Sounds wild, doesn't it? The mind boggles, that's four o'clock in the real holiday show. You can, of course, ring or uh, email us at Living Live. I'd love to hear from you. We're talking about some of the news stories of the day. George Harrison's wife being a heroine. Gwyneth Paltrow, Paltrow who seems to have hooked herself a boyfriend worth about £300 million, which can't be a pull bad. And why people in Biggleswell...